Hello and welcome to my review of the Jawven Up 3. This is by far my favourite fitness wearable and probably one of the most compelling devices on the market. When paired to the companion app, the device can track up to 16 different metrics, but most notably tracks activity, sleep and food. Let's get stuck in. So here we have everything that comes in the box. Uh, these two come inside the box, but if we just take a look at the box, um, it's got the main features here at the front, the heart rate sensor, the smart coach, the advanced sleep tracking, and the advanced activity tracking. On the right hand side, you've got the features here, and I'll just uh, zoom in on that. Um, so you've got the galvanic skin response sensor, the skin temperature sensor, heart rate sensor, accelerometer, heart rate sensor, respiration sensor, and a battery life of up to seven days. Um, I'll come back to the sensors in a second. Um, and then uh, over here you have, um, this is essentially the, um, the charging dongle and it's slightly different from the previous one. The previous one had a headphone jack in here that connected to the end of uh, the device. And now we just have a much simpler system which has two magnets which essentially attach to the back of the wearable and it creates quite a good connection. So if I just show you how that works, it just goes into the back like so. And that's it. And it's uh, quite a strong connection. Um, it holds the device really, really well. And as you can see here, I'm rotating it and it's not falling on its own weight, but it's equally easy just to pull pull away. So again, great connection. And that's essentially how it charges. Um, it charges via USB, uh, which goes into any device. It can be a, a laptop. It can be a one of these power banks that you can get and it will charge through that. It charges typically in about... Um, uh, an hour or so, uh, maybe just over an hour, depending on how, how low the charge is. Um, the device itself, we just move the packaging to one side and we just move the charge over here. The device itself is, is, is quite a nice device. It's got a um, touch screen here at the top. Uh, it's not something they put on the box. And underneath you see all the sensors that it was talking about. But it's not clear which sensor does what and how it does it. Um, and what is interesting is that it's although it's got a lot of skin-based sensors, so you had the galvanic uh, response sensor and the skin temperature sensor, there's no indication of those specific measures in the app, and we'll have a look at that later. But it's likely that they probably contribute to maybe the improvement of the heart rate tracking. Um, I don't know, but it's, it's really not clear. I would expect with those sensors that I'd have some information about those things, especially seeing as they're on the box. Um, Apart from that, the clasp here um, is quite straightforward. There's been a lot of issues with this, uh, and I've actually customized mine to the point where it's no longer a problem. Um, but I'll show you how it goes on. It basically goes on like so. I like to wear it this way around. Um, and essentially the loop goes through the back end, and um, you've got this clasp here. And essentially my, my technique is I, I tighten it and uh, place this underneath. Once I've finished doing that, I just remove that, and then it just falls into place really nicely. Um, and what I, the issue I was talking about here was to do with the, with the clasp. So essentially what's been happening is that a lot of users have found the clasp here um, getting very loose, so coming out, and secondly, um, this whole mechanism moving. And so um, what I did was I actually customized mine a little bit. I changed uh, this section here, so I actually pushed it down like so. Uh, using a clamp um, just so that it was there was less space between this top section here and the main band and that made this um, particular part of the loop stay in and less likely to come out and I don't know it just sits better um, and then the second thing I did was this whole mechanism here um, this whole sort of clamp system you can see their little grooves and essentially this clamp is supposed to stick into those. Um, but once I basically got the right sort of position on the band, I used again clamps to tighten this uh, like that. So I was pressing as my fingers are. And um, that basically tightened them and I don't get much if any movement. So you can see I'm pulling quite a bit there and I'm not getting movement. But if I really give it a tug, then I can move it ever so slightly. So uh, that's good because it means when it's on my wrist, um, usual activity isn't going to move it um, and it's going to stay comfortable on my arm. Um, 
the thing about trackers like this is that most of their goodness, most of their features come from the apps. These are just tracking data. Uh, the data itself is probably not human readable, so you can probably chart anything with it. But um, that's where really the app comes in. And so I'm going to bring in my phone here and we're going to have a look at the app. We're here in the app. Um, on the left hand side, you can see um, what I'm actually doing on the phone. Um, but uh, I keep the Jawbone Up app on my home screen. It's just right here. So I've just had it open actually. So I'm going to I'm going to go to it and uh, close it. And then I'm going to go back and we're going to go back to the home screen. So um, essentially when you fire the app, you get a yellow sort of holding screen. It's very brief. And then straight away you get this dialog here. And as you can see at the top, there's a line that just shot across from left to right. That's basically the synchronization method. Um, if you've synchronized recently, then that moves quite quickly. If you wake up in the morning and then you go to synchronize it, it takes a little bit of, little bit of time because what it's also doing is uh, sending some sleep data. Um, when you open the app, it's it's quite a simple interface. So you have these two charts. Um, it can also be three if you're act, uh, actively involved in food tracking. I'll show you that a little later. Um, but it's really quite simple. So you have um, the hamburger menu here gives you uh, access to the settings option here on the bottom left and goals, trends. Uh, if you have friends who have the same tracker, you can add them to your team. You can take part in head-to-head -head duels and an inbox. Uh, I think that's more for messaging. And then um, if you go over here on the top right and click on the, uh, the small band, then you get the band specific options. And so you get the sleep tracking option, you get the stopwatch, smart alarm, idle alert, activity alerts, and reminders that you can set up. And here on the bottom, you can obviously click that to add a new a new tracker, but I'm not gonna do that. Um, and that's it. So basically, once you get into the meat of the app, um, first thing you have at the top is this resting heart rate trend. And the dark area is my sleep. Um, so it's sleep time, and that's automatically tracked. When this launched first time around, you had to manually activate sleep tracking, and now it's automatic, uh, which is quite good. The resting heart rate trend shows you a trend over the last uh, 30 days. And um, the good thing about the Jawbone app uh, and just Jawbone in general with their app is that they try and bring some science into it. Not necessarily because the tracker is accurate enough to be scientific, but it's more just to give you a context of why the number you're looking at is 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 important and it gives you some additional information as well about healthy ranges and so on and so forth um in the app it can also give you some relevant feedback i haven't actually got any feedback for the day today um i think yesterday i had a quiet day so it's just go straight into my activity telling me uh when i moved and this was five minutes ago so i've been quite active this morning um, and as you scroll down, uh, you get to see other other bits of information. Um, so it noticed that I had um, a, a late bedtime yesterday, so it's giving me some advice about that. Uh, and I can give it feedback. So if I like this bit of feedback, I can hit the plus icon, and it, I, I'm assuming Jawbone improved their algorithms to better give me information that I like. Um, as the tracker collects pertinent bits of information, uh, it displays it in a timeline. And one of the things about this is it's quite tedious. If you want to go back to what you were doing, let's say on Monday, then it can, quite, it can be quite tedious to keep going back. But what you can also see here is a range of messages that you get um, from the up system. And it's lots of different things. Uh, you notice here I've got integration with RunKeeper. And you've also got um, some... Uh, manual tracking so when you get let's say go for a walk and the band recognizes that um, you did some activity but it's not tracked you can say um, you can tell it what you were doing so it will automatically pull up this uh, view saying were you active from 705 to 11 sorry 729 uh, if I hit yes it goes what kind of active activity were you doing I'll tell it I was doing a walk it automatically prefills the start time and the duration for you, you hit plus and hit plus again and now that's added and now it doesn't have that question anymore so it's added that into the mix and uh, it now has better intelligence about that particular walk and uh, the same with sleep um, with sleep if you go to bed and you forget to do your sleep tracking when you wake up it will sometimes prompt you and say hey um, you know 
the way you sleep between this time and this time. And I'm not talking about sleep tracking with the wristband on. I'm talking about if you maybe prefer to go to sleep without the wristband, you can still track the number of hours because the phone app and the wristband um, are aware that you weren't wearing the tracker between that time and it'll make a, an estimate which you can then improve. So that's the basic functionality. Now, as a tracking tool, uh, this app also has some really cool features. If um, you hit this plus icon, you get five options. You can track an activity, you can, attract, you can track your mood, you can track food, weight, and sleep. Now, sleep is automatic and the activity is mostly automatic. But food and weight um, and mood sort of need some user input. I think um, weight can be integrated uh, automatically if you use a service like If This Then That, i.e. Ift and you could then automatically put in your weight, but if not, you can just come in here and every time you step on the on the, on the the weights, you can just add that manually. Um, following that, you can also track food. So um, I'm just gonna show you how the food tracking works very briefly. So I'm gonna show you how food tracking works and you can see I've got three items, Nutella, some soup and a box of roses. And the thing that all these things have that you can use for tracking is the barcode and the nutritional information that's usually on the box. So we're gonna um, very briefly show you how uh, that can work and we're gonna try that. So if I hit the plus icon and I hit on food, um, you have this option here. You can take a photo, so you can take a photo of something like an apple and it will try and identify it. Um, you can use this tracking code um, for using a bar. You can use a menu if you're in a restaurant, um, but very few places support that. And this one here is about what, uh, sort of tracking your water intake. So I've had two cups of water, so I'll just hit that twice. Uh, that's a very simple way of doing it. And then we'll try and track each one of these things and see if we get a track. So um, I'm gonna bring this one item first. And the thing about this barcode tracker is that it can be sometimes temperamental. I've tried a whole range of bar tra code trackers and it can be temperamental and what's worse is that sometimes it can't even find what you're looking for. So um, a food with this barcode cannot be found so you can enter it manually and then you can just enter the basic values in. That's a bit tedious for this video so I'm not going to do that. Instead I'm going to put that away and try some Nutella. See if this is on the tracking database. It should be. So come on, let's try and, so this is quite, as you can see here, this is quite, um, still nothing. This is really disappointing. Anyway, um, so here we are, we're back in the app, uh, we've, we've tracked some food and you can see here, you get a score out of 10 based on your food tracking. So. If you do invest in that, it tries to give you some scores about food tracking. And so I actually did this a few days ago. I don't normally food track. It's quite a hard thing to be consistent with, but I did track my food intake a few days ago. And you can see uh, there's a new animation here when I achieved my step goal. It's got a slightly different animation. It's quite interesting. If we click on this food track, you can see the different points of the day in which I ate food and you can see how many calories I had left towards my goal. And when you set your goal, it shows you this interface. Uh, and so you get a very good sort of summary here of um, your totals and, and, and what's going on and uh, whether, whether you're achieving the goals and you get this sort of word cloud of the things that were impacting your calorific intake the most. So chicken, southern fried chicken wrap um, <laughs> pretty much contributed to most of my calories that day. Um, I had, um, a decent amount of sugar actually, which is quite surprising. Normally I eat a lot more sugar than that, uh, but my carb intake was way over. So yeah, you get a very basic summary of what's going on. Again, it's not scientific. The margin of error in this is high, but if you're looking for a general um, analysis of what you're eating, then this is a good way to do it. If we go back to the home screen. Now the last thing you can track on this is, um, if we go back up to today, again, there's no today button, I wish there was, um, is uh, your mood. And the, your mood is really quite simple. You get this sort of cool interaction here and you just slide up and slide down, <laughs> slide up 
and slide down. And it makes it quite fun, actually. I really like this. Uh, and so if you're feeling great, like I am today, then uh, you just leave it there, click Amazing at the plus, and it logs that you're feeling amazing. So you get a nice mood uh, activity step and sleep tracking capability. And it's all in one app. It's quite hard to do all these things in one app. Um, and the thing I like about this is the coaching. So um, this 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 section here, the smart coach, earlier bedtime equals more active you, um, dream science. And it talks a bit about your sleep and what's going on. And if you hit the learn more option, then you get the science behind that. Okay, the sources sometimes are a bit, you know, uh, interesting. Um, I think they could definitely pick better um, sources. But, you know, the attempts to link the science in is, is a good one. And this sort of interface also isn't like it's it's really nice because it gets you focusing on the quality of what you're doing and not just the number. Because of all this information here, you're less inclined to go, oh, I've got 10,000 steps and you're more inclined to ask, well, what does that really mean? And that's the important thing. Uh, what does all this mean? Uh, and so that's it. That's pretty much the app in, in one go. The last uh, area is here on the left hand side where you have goals, trends, teams, and so on and so forth. And you can set your goals manually. You can um, also interact uh, with uh, you know, friends that are partaking in duels. You can look at your moving trend over periods of time, over months, weeks, and days. And this is pretty much the only place you can look at the trends. Uh, and you can also change what you're looking at, which is quite cool. Um, and then when you've done that, it will, it will change what's in the view. So um, that's it. That's pretty much a summary of the app. All in all, um, this is this is my fitness tracker of choice. Um, I've used Fitbit for quite a while, but over the last six months, I switched to the Jawbone platform. Um, and that's it. So I'm on a mission to prove this food scanning it really does work. So we're going to have another go. So we're going to try and scan these roses. And there's the barcode. Oh. I think partly the light and come on. There we go. Item is scanned. Click OK and you click plus when you're done. You get roses. Uh, one piece is forty eight calories, so if we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pieces, can we, yeah, oh, eight pieces is 384 calories. Right, we're done. Let's add a limb. And look at that, my score went down to 6.10, and that is the end of the video. Woo. Thanks for watching the first video on this channel. If you like what you saw or have any views, please leave a comment below. Otherwise, subscribe and I'll catch you next time.